All right, kids, huge movie fanatic Nate back with another audio review here of a movie that I just watched tonight. And you might have guessed it, this is yet again another half price books clearance DVD. I got for a whopping 200 cents plus, you know, the lovely sales tax. So um, this is a movie for, or, I mean, a movie review for real genius. Now, this is a title that having grown up in the entire, you know, having grown up in the 80s, this is a title that I saw the cover of this movie, you know, for just, for ages, for years and years, you know, over a decade. In the video store I saw this cover, you know. This this movie came out in the era, in the age of these, you know, teeny bopper smart kids movies like Weird Science, Science, and, uh, there's probably more, but uh, War Games and things like that, you know, Cloak and Dagger, not that that's really like this, but, and, and, and also that one with, uh, oh hell, I can't remember what the hell it was called, I didn't really think much of it, with Matthew Broderick and the, the Monkey or whatever, which was the late 80s, but this, this movie was one of the, one of those like young people, smart young people kind of movies, so I was actually surprised that I had never seen it, but uh, I mean, um, you know, a clear, you know, two dollar DVD from, uh, you know, a movie from the good old '80s. I'm like, oh hell yeah, you know, this this title I've known about for pretty much ever, and I've never seen this is this is exactly why I love to frequent the clearance DVDs. So I'm like, sure, you know, pay two bucks for this. It'll probably be, you know, cool because it's the '80s. And unfortunately, I just got done watching it, you know, hour or so ago, and. Unfortunately, I was kind of, you know, disappointed how not so hot it was. Um, you know, I mean, it had, uh, Val Kilmer was pretty good in it. That's pretty much the only thing about it that was really any good. I was surprised how much uh, the movie started and then that really, with the direction, the you know, the ever evil U.S. government, uh, the movie starts with the ever evil U.S. government wanting to make this this weapon to use for peacetime, not that that lasts very long, you know, fucking, the weapon won't even be created by the, you know, and by the time it's created, the peacetime will be fucking over. But, uh, you know, I thought that was kind of a lame-ass fucking premise that these bastards want to make this weapon for fucking the few short months of peacetime in between fucking wars. And, uh, you know, they're like, heh, 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 heh you know, let's make this weapon for peacetime. So basically this, uh, this professor, this college professor, the asshole from, I, this poor guy, every fucking role I've seen him in, he's an asshole. You know, it's, it's, uh, Dickless from Ghostbusters and the guy from, uh, uh, Die Hard, you know, he's an ass, he's the exact same character in every freaking movie, this asshole who probably, you know, oh man. <clears throat> you probably hates to be recognized in public because when all you play is an asshole, people just like throw tomatoes at you in the subway. Not that he takes the subway, but I don't know, maybe he does. <laughs> so on to the review, you know, it started with its with a setup that looked like it was going to go somewhere, and then basically pretty much the, uh, I'd say like a, oh, maybe, maybe an hour of the movie is just kind of, this young 15-year-old kid is a, like a genius and he goes to this school where this Val Kilmer genius is and it's, they're like going to live in this dorm full of geniuses that make freaking ice and they sled down the dorm halls and then the ice evaporates into steam and, you know, that's great, all fine and dandy. And actually one of the guys, this Asian guy, I didn't, I, he kind of looked familiar and kind of didn't and then I looked in the credits and it's Dean Devlin, the guy who would end up, uh, I think, co-writing and producing some of the Roland Emmerich, you know, schlock stuff like uh, Independence Day and Stargate and Godzilla. He might have ended their collaboration with Godzilla. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really. I don't know the credits of that one that they did after Godzilla because it didn't interest in me. But anyway, it didn't interest me. So Dean Devlin actually had been an actor apparently. So that's kind of a cool thing. And uh, so pretty much the movie just exists for an hour of just, you know, this hijinks, this genius Val Kilmer who was just like not a genius until the last 
third of the movie when all of a sudden he's pressured by this asshole guy, you know, the dickless from Ghostbusters, who uh, is pressured by his superiors, the assholes from the government who want to make this weapon, this peacetime weapon. <clears throat> you know, what the fuck do you need a weapon for in peacetime? Well, you fucking assholes. But uh, they want to be able to zap, zap, you know, whoever they want from the from space, just zap them right out of the chair like the little movie in the opening sh uh, showed. So, uh, sh as you know, that's my thinking of stars noise. Uh, I guess one and a half stars. I mean, it's it teeters on two, but really... I mean, really, unfortunately, I, I, was, I was really kind of disappointed to find out. that. See, when I got this movie, I figured, if nothing else, it'd have, like, the 80s, uh, retro 80s, cinem not sentimentality, but just that, you know, warm 80s feel to it. And, yeah, it had a lot of, like, 80s songs and stuff and all this kind of stuff. I mean, 80s, I should say 80s-ish songs. I mean, nothing that necessarily... Well, yeah, I guess there, it ended with a song that I knew I was familiar with, but... It really didn't even have the charm of like an 80s movie, even though it is an 80s movie. So it really didn't have a whole hell of a lot going for it. So one and a half stars for Real Genius. I mean, um, <clears throat> you know, it's it really is just, you know, uh, it's just so weird how movies like this get, you know, scripts like this get greenlit. It's just like, for me, there's just so, you know, little about it that's interesting. You know, the, the problem with getting older, or at least for me, I can't speak for anyone else, but when you get older, you, you know, or I guess when I get older, it's like, obviously, you know, the more movies you've seen, the more times you've seen it, and the more you've seen, the more you've just realized that you're in a lot of cases, you're just seeing the same thing over and over. So, like, when you're a teenager, you know, you're still, it's like the great time of your life because you're discovering all this stuff. And it's like, ooh, that's cool. Ooh, I've never seen that. Ooh, that's original. You know, and by the time you're my age, it's just like, by the time you're my age, it's just like, you've seen it all before. <laughs> so, uh, so maybe that'll end the real genius review. I'm afraid it's one and a half stars. And, uh, but two dollars, I mean, it, it uh, in case you're wondering, it, I don't think I'm going to put it in the, uh, s you know, sell back to half price books pile just because, you know, you might want to re, I don't know why, but I can see possibly wanting to revisit this someday. Who the hell knows, but it, it's not going in the sell back to half price books pile. So thank you very much for listening, and we'll catch you on the next review.